see a red light, I'm on the air. Hi boys and girls, it's me Butch. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Terry David Silvercloud. I'm 75 years old. My mouth is dry. Great timing, eh? Um, I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, I paint in my old age. Um, when I was younger, uh, when I was quite young, I was an officer in the Navy, and after I left the Navy, I discovered what gay was, and I was it, and I'd signed on for seven years, so I left at minimum seven years before they found out what I was about, because in those days, you could go to jail for being gay. Um, but uh, I, uh, I fell in love and uh, chased after my boyfriend to Europe, and we ended up in Madrid. And uh, I saw the uh, Garden of, let me get this right, the Garden of Earthly Delights at the Prado. And uh, it was very nice. Uh, so I didn't think much more about <clears throat> the painting, even though I was a fan of Salvador Dali. Oh, and I became a photographer. I eventually realized that, you know, you just can't suddenly be a painter. It takes time. And now in my old age, I'm trying to be a painter. I've got time. I'm retired. So, uh, where were I? Um, I didn't think much more about uh, the painting until a couple of years ago when I was studying history and religions and hell and all that, and I came across Buddhist hells, and I thought, oh, maybe Hieronymus saw these. So I looked at the Garden of Earthly Delights again, and I noticed other things I hadn't thought about the first time, which is uh, the painting had camel, a camel, at least one, and uh, there was more than one camel, an elephant, and a giraffe, and aside from the other strange creatures that were there, these were fairly exotic animals in, in Jerome's day. I'm going to call him Jerome. That's what his friends, I think, would have, or something closer to that. In Jerome's day, he didn't travel a lot. Uh, he was born in, uh, let me see, f around 1450, about 1450. In 1440, 10 years earlier, uh, the printing press had been invented. So he, he was from a family of artists. His grandfather uh, was an artist, and his father and uncles were artists. So somebody taught Jerome to draw and to paint, and he became wildly popular. Uh, partly because of the type of imagery he began to paint in more in his middle age. He didn't really get religion until he was in his 40s, like very religious. He joined a, a religious order in his uh, 40s. And uh, the Garden of Earthly Delights was painted in the later stage of his life. It's believed he died in 1516 in August. Uh, but we don't know the exact date, although the service, I think it was August 9th. Uh, so, where did he get these, like, why did Jerome know about elephants and giraffes and uh, camels? Well, I, at that time, uh, the Netherlands, the Dutch, were doing a lot of trading, so he must have and would have seen quite a few printed works by this time. Remember, the printing press was invented 10 years before he was born, so that by the time he was in his 20s, printing presses would have been around 30 years, and certain things would start to be in print. And the only way you could put a picture in print in those days was to engrave it on other special type of uh, metal service or a prepared service, it literally had to be drawn on a plate which would be inked to make the print. And uh, that's what printing presses do, but uh, photographic types of printing, that, that's going to be a long way away. So it was good time, good timing for old Jerome. You know, he was really good at drawing and uh, also was at a time uh, after the Crusades and hell was all very popular. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church totally embraced hell, so if he was promoting hell, 
that that was all for the better as far as the church was concerned. They they weren't gonna they wanted to scare the crap of other people anyway to keep you in line. And in those days, people before the printing press in particular, people would have had no particular reference to well what exactly is hell. It didn't really become popular until after the Crusades because. Um, other than bad translations, and the, the Jews don't have a hell or a heaven. There may be a heaven, but there's no real hell. Uh, and the word hell is just a bad translation for grave. And so there's no hell in the Old Testament, and Jesus wasn't much preaching hell. And then you get the book of Revelations, which got thrown in when the Roman Catholic Church got their act together in 385. And the Council of Nicaea, and they all agreed to... They needed a Bible and commissioned Jerome to look after that and he did it, translated everything into Latin. So the book of Revelations got into uh, into the Bible and then by the time the Crusades happened, I think the bishops realized that the Islamic nation was years ahead of them. It made the Christians look like barbarians, which they were. You know, once they encountered some of the Islamic uh, works, uh, they also would have discovered the writings of the Quran. The Quran is all about hell, and it even describes some of the horrors of hell in the Quran. I mean, the whole book is all about hell, and uh, you should read the Quran. It's pretty nasty. Uh, where were I? So the thing is, Jerome, how did he come up with elephants for his paintings? and? giraffes well it turns out that one of the things and i'm not the only one that noticed this uh there was a fellow whose name was i gotta open this up i'm still not good at pronouncing his name chiriaco de pizzicoli and an even longer name than that he's sort of considered the father of archaeology and he published some sort of little book uh, around right after the printing press happened or somebody published it with uh, illustrations of what was in his actual book because they couldn't photograph it they would have to make a fairly accurate drawing of what somebody saw but uh, in his uh, record there is a picture of a giraffe and it's almost identical to the one in the Garden of Earth of Delights it's almost like uh, Jerome just cut out the one from there and pasted it on the, there you go, it's the, the same giraffe. Well, what about the elephants? And again, uh, Chiriaco had a picture of an elephant. So there were probably some other drawings that Chiriaco had, which, because his notes were lost, the original notes were lost, uh, th there may well have been the other animals. So that would explain, my nose is seizing up on me, it does that. I don't have a cold, it just does that. Uh, makes my voice sound funny. So where else did, so Jerome, I'm not the only person I noticed this, and you can check this out, and hopefully when you're watching this, you're seeing pictures going by you. I'm, I'm going to be putting pictures over my face uh, to try and illustrate what I'm talking about, testing out the editor I'm going to be trying out. Uh, uh, Jerome must have seen these kind of things, and you will see if you know her on, or Jerome's work, there's a couple different prints called uh, Besieging of the Elephants, or Besieging the Elephant, words to that effect. And, and indeed, there's an elephant with uh, being attacked. And couple, there's more than one version of this. And what the most famous uh, was by a printer or the person who did the engraving I believe his name was Hamel, H-A-M-E-L. If you don't already know this, see, this is easy to check all this stuff out. I just try to get into your head that uh, I wondered where Jerome got, got all his influences from. And uh, uh, the elephant that you see in that quite, and I think there is an original print of Hamel's or even a couple of originals, they'd be quite valuable. The, these aren't copies, they're, these are the real deal from quite a long time ago uh, of the elephant. Uh, Hamel's is probably closest to whatever the original uh, drawing was by Bosch, because if you look in the upper left-hand corner of that elephant uh, picture, 
the buildings and scenery in the background are arranged. You can see two owls. They're not owls, but if you just sort of, once you realize that Jerome had some kind of thing for owls, and you'll see owls in a number of his works, uh, he sneaks them in, and uh, he may even have snuck in a portrait of himself in the Garden of Earthly Delights, and hopefully that picture is appearing right now. I've popped it in above my, you don't want to be looking at me, do you? Um, so did I cover all that? Because I really didn't want this to be like really, really long, which I'm, I'm like this, I go on and on and on. See, it's like 10 minutes already. So I, I'm going to shut up and cut to the chase here. Uh, what uh, I'd said was I associated the Buddhist house with uh, Jerome's work. So hopefully now, because I would have been showing a whole bunch of Jerome's work, starting from here on in the edit and I'll just put on some music and shut up I'll put some Buddhist hell drawings and that will wind out the video so I don't go too long so I'll just put in some music here I hope and uh, I'll shut up and uh, the whole point of this video because I don't want to do it over and over and over again because uh, I'll just make as many screw ups as I did this time uh, if you like it give me a like give me a thumbs up uh, just cut my hold He's old and he's crazy. Uh, you got to be a whack on your old age. Um, so it's going to be, we're coming up to 12 minutes now, so it's going to be bye-bye from Butch, and uh, we'll close out with some Buddhist uh, hell pictures. And they got their hell from uh, Hindu hells, which apparently were underground and very fiery. I don't know if I got this the way I wanted to, but we're coming up to three, four, where we are. Oh, shut up, David. Bye, everybody.